this was me, this is me now. I'm gonna explain exactly how I did it, how I train, what I eat, and I'll be sharing some bonus tips as well. Make sure you stick around till the end where I'll share my four favorite meal types for building muscle. Let's get into it. Firstly, my training. And by the way, if I can do it, you certainly can. I've had three knee operations and I've got about 20% of my cartilage left in the one knee. I've had a complete elbow reconstruction, loads of concussions, shoulder problems. Rugby really did a number on me, but if I can do it, it really does mean that you can too. When I first retired from rugby, I felt a bit lost and I got obsessed with HIIT training and truthfully had an eating disorder. That combo meant I lost a lot of muscle. The turning point for me was when I got into lifting. I started chasing strength and muscle gains rather than trying to fit in with what I thought I should look like. Anyway, this was 2020. I was used to these rapid hit sessions, so adjusting to slower lifting sessions was a challenge at first. Mike, who was coaching me, started to build up the rest in between my sets. This is where I really started to make progress. Getting enough rest between sets meant I could really go max intensity for those final few reps. And that was the difference between okay gains and really solid progress. In terms of my training structure, I've alternated from doing whole body sessions for a few months to more of a push-pull leg split for the last few weeks. I can't do muscle-specific workouts because it's too much volume in one session working around my old injuries. But every so often, I do like to change the training style for the sake of variety. I'll hit three or four sessions a week and I'll be in the gym for an hour up to an hour 15 per session. I always start with my main compound or strength lift. This will have lower reps than the other exercises in the workout, around six to eight. Here's an example of a training day with sets, reps and rest. If I do add cardio, I will add 10 minutes to the end of my session or I'll do it as its own standalone bonus session. The sessions will never be at a super high intensity cardio wise because it's not my focus. And the priority for my training is to recover well and focus on strength and size. I had to build volume up over time. I didn't immediately start with the training levels I do now. It depends on your previous training and how used to it you are. But for me, I increased volume when I found I was recovering quicker. The single best thing I did to make more progress was to move away from weekly training blocks. What I mean by weekly training blocks is by having set days for set workouts. With this structure, you can miss a session and then miss key exercises and not do them for a following week. And this could really slow progress. And that's why you see people with muscular upper bodies, but then their legs aren't the same. And this is because legs can be at the end of the week and it's always the one that tends to get skipped. So that phrase, never miss leg day, is there for a reason. Instead, I have set workouts, but no set days. For example, I have workouts one, two, and three. I try my best to have it as a day on and a day off, which means I can train four days a week, but it changes which days I go to the gym. If I do have to miss a day unexpectedly, I can just hit the next workout when I'm next in the gym. And so never missing out on key exercises. So instead of this, try this. Nutrition. Do not skip this section. It's the number one thing holding most people back from seeing real gains. You see a lot of people being really consistent in the gym, but their nutrition not matching it. I personally had to go through a bit of a journey with nutrition. When I got into lifting, I was dealing with an eating disorder. I was trying to survive on as little calories as possible to try and stay skinny. And that's not even what I actually really wanted. It was what I thought was expected. Lifting helped snap me out of that. I love seeing and feeling the progress. I wanted to lift more, then I wanted to get bigger. So I realized I needed to eat more to make that happen. I started setting a minimum calorie limit per day, not a maximum. Now I had to get a certain amount of calories per day. I went from 1500 to 2000 and eventually built up to 3000 calories a day. Now these calories can't be made up of anything if you want to make maximum gains. I increased my protein a lot. It went up to 200 grams of protein a day. For reference, when I started lifting in 2020, I was 63 kilos, that's 138 pounds. I'm now 73 kilos and 160 pounds. 
Here's what I did to get my protein up. Stage one, adding a protein source to every meal. The easiest way to get to your daily target is by breaking it down into smaller chunks. Stage two, I increase the amount of protein that I have with each meal. This was as simple as having a bit more of the protein I was already having. Stage three, I added a protein snack. Now I actually just added a protein bar and I'm sure there are some nutritional gurus out there saying that protein bars give you tuberculosis or something, but for me it absolutely works, help add in that extra 20 grams of protein a day. Stage four, if I'm having a really busy day and I'm gonna struggle to hit my protein targets, I'll recognize it early and I'll plan to have a protein shake. Remember, if you stick around to the end, I will share my four favorite meal types that make it super easy to hit your protein targets. Bonus tips, do not underestimate the power of good sleep. For me, it can make or break a session. Don't get me wrong, I'll always get to the gym, but it's that top 2% of intensity that might drop, and that can make a big difference. Also, being tired makes it so much more difficult to make good decisions around food. Often, it makes us slightly more stressed, so we're unable to settle, so we end up grazing or boredom eating. An important tip is to really focus on your priorities. If you want to get bigger or stronger or both, smashing loads of cardio isn't gonna help you reach those goals. It doesn't mean you have to cut cardio out completely, just prioritize things in order of importance to you. Finally, remember, building muscle takes time. It's not a race. So you need to be building habits and a lifestyle that supports your goals. Before I finish, I've not forgotten about sharing my four favorite meal types. These are rice bowls, stir fries, wraps, and omelets. I love these because they are super easy and quick to make, and it is easy to pack the protein in. You are picking four or five different foods, chucking them together and eating. I use one of these options for most of my meals, and it's made my life a hundred times easier. I hope you found this useful. If so, drop this video a like and subscribe for more rugby and fitness content. Thanks for watching.